Just ask you, I'm a bit confused. Um, um, with your conditioning uh, percentile of reference ranges, are you making the assumption these are normally normal population? That is to say, you find a small baby or you find a high resistance index mm. in, the, in the vessels, mm. and then you say to yourself, these are the normal ranges for this group of babies, either very small babies or very, mm. Very um, or or or, or Doppler's at the extremes of the standard reference, and then you 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 say you so your is your population actually normal, um, normally grown, normally small, normally small babies which are growing normally. Yeah, <coughs> that, that's the point of it. This is a low mm. risk. It's w what is normal. It's a low risk population. So at the end there was. 10% uh, cesarean section rate. There was development of preeclampsia in the in that group, which was uh, st less than 4%. And uh, they, they, it's just a low risk, so it's not a uh, high risk population. So well, then you define that if there is a small one because they all survived, then you know that this is what I can expect from a low-risk population. We have to keep that in mind that this is a low-risk population pattern we are calculating. So when you have then uh, a lupus anticoagulants, they will come out of these normal ranges. But they will, to survive, they will have to be reasonably within the ranges of the, of the references that we have to, um, to keep in life. Otherwise, if they go out of it, they will probably die. In UK, we use customized uh, charts, especially for the estimated fetal weights, um, yeah. as a routine in, in sort of all sorts of populations. So how will this compare with those charts, or do you think there is a place of both? Yes, uh, I mean... Um, because it does take into account various other factors. If you look at the biometry, you can... People have compared doing customization and doing uh, conditioning, and they've seen whether this is better than the other one. It's not like that. It is both. Uh, you, if you have an uh, mother, ethnic mother coming from the Indian subcontinent, of course you do customization. And then you do also this uh, conditioning when you follow it. There's uh, no contradiction. It's, it's better to combine. Um, my question has two, two sides. The first part is, um, is uh, using these customized charts, are they likely to identify the growth-restricted babies that are normal, normally weighed, who have died probably in utero and have been labeled as unexplained fetal deaths, and then placental pathology sometimes provide evidence of uh, um, placental insufficiency. And the second part is, uh, if we use a customized chart, does that mean we are going to sort of um, ignore the 10th percentile abdominal circumference or ex estimated fetal weight, margin for uh, growth restriction or small for dates? Uh, I think you can use both, and the, <coughs> the one doesn't exclude the other one. You can customize, and uh, then you have to decide yourself how you are going to react on that, whether you are going to react on the, cost on the customized condition situation if you are going to repeat your measurements. If you are going to repeat your measurements, then you have first customized it, the baby, then you shifted the, the reference ranges, but you can then once, still you have a variety for this ethnic group, for instance, and then you find out that this baby is small in that one as well, and then you can condition when it starts to make the second and third and fourth and measurement, and then you can see whether it really is within the normal ranges. And the, the, these ranges are telling you the likelihood for that this is a normal uh, growth, trajectory for that individual. So if you are on the 2.5 centile, you are very low uh, after conditioning, then th that is a very unlikely that this is a normal. Or it's 2.5% likelihood that this is a normal growth. But Torvi, do you do uh, a conditioning for each individual fetus then? Have I understood that correctly? Yes, for those who are, we are doing the longitudinal, yes. 
But what a, if you start with a severely abnormal waveform in the umbilical artery, let's right. say, with zero flow in the umbilical artery? We all know this is <laughs> severely abnormal. If you condition for that fetus, mm -hmm. you may look at it and say, well, next time it's uh, fine, because for that fetus, this is what it is. Mm -hmm. But we know it's abnormal. Well, if you have a very small baby, mm -hmm. you might have, a, within the normal population, some of the thousand grams will be normal. Yeah, but they won't have zero flow in the umbilical artery. I mean, I think we all agree that zero flow in the umbilical artery at 26 weeks is severely abnormal. There's no well, doubt about if you, that. Well, if you're conditioning, you'll see it's way out of normal ranges when you do the conditioning as well. Yeah, but you, you, what you construct is you construct the individual, individually conditioned reference ranges for that fetus. Mm -hmm which we know is abnormal, so you have an abnormal normal range then. No, we're not, no, no, that's not, not exactly so. What we have constructed is for a s uh, equally small normal fetus, the normal ranges we expect f to grow according to. If this is abnormal and with the same weight, it will develop differently. The, the, if you have a very small or a very big, they tend to grow towards the mean. It's more parallel, so they will be more and more to the mean. And the reason for that is, when you measure a 2.5 centile, for instance, for weight, the probability that you have that the baby is this small, it's, it's higher probability that it is less small. Because whenever you measure, you have individual variation and then you have measurement error. And the measurement error can put you down or lift it up. But when you are at the extreme, then the probability is that you have a minus minus, and the next time you have a 50% chance that the error goes the opposite way. So then that converts to the mean. Um. So, is it, so my understanding is that most of the charts that we use currently are actually derived from cross-sectional data. Uh, Am I correct? Sorry, can you repeat? So, so most of the charts that we use, either for uh, fetal measurements or yeah. Doppler measurements, mm. are, are in fact derived from cross-sectional data. Many of them are, yes. Yeah. And so do you think that actually using longitudinal data is, is far correct yes. than using cross-sectional data? Yes. And, but how would that work in practice? I mean, would we, would we be able to have this similar charts but derived from longitudinal data, yeah. or, or actually it's very individual? I uh, just don't this, uh, I have, um, we have this chart, we can, and uh, you can have a spreadsheet. You just load it on, I have it with me here, you can, I can give you to, you can copy it or anybody here can do so, uh, we can leave the, the documentation here on the CD and then you can have it. And then you can just uh, feed this sheet with your information and you, you have calculated already the, the, the both for the, what you expect of the entire population and what you expect from this particular individual. Thank you. Are your reference ranges available already? I mean, are yes. they in any of the systems yes. included? Yes. We have Roland Denk here, for instance, Astraya. Do you have them? Not yet. Not yet, but you will. Already. <laughs> <laughs> it would be important, hey, Stuart. Many years ago, before you were many years ago, before you were born, probably, I, I created. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I created for the biparietal diameter a velocity graph from longitudinal data. So we had for every gestation what the velocity of growth should be. Yes. This is similar to a conditioning graph, yes. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. This is the velocity. Yeah. From that you can draw the terms to calculate for individuals. So yeah. you have to draw out this term. We didn't do that. I have done longitudinal study when I did the diagnosis. <coughs> But we analyzed it as, it, if, it, as if it was a cross-sectional. We didn't take into to the power of longitudinal design, right. which we do today. Then you could have a velocity graph for, uh, you know, f a, for Indian babies or for yes. Caucasian, et cetera. So you yeah. can customize it yes. according. So there would yeah. be a velocity. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah that's, that's a good idea. Because you can have growth restriction of a, of a very... Um, a, Big baby, 
we have seen this, this also. You have a big baby goes below 50 centile, and it's actually only 2.5 individual centile. No more questions? <laughs>